This is 2013 MEXT undergraduate mathematics B paper. Section 1, number 1. First of all, let's expand these brackets. Next, in order to find the minimum of this function, we need to differentiate it. So let's find f dash of x. The constant term disappears, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. And how do we differentiate sine x squared? Let y be equal to sine x squared, and let u be equal to sine x. Then y is equal to u squared. Now, let's differentiate y with respect to u. Now, to get dy dx, we need to use the chain rule which states that dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. So what is du dx? Because u is sine x, du dx is cosine x. Therefore, dy du is 2u times du dx is cosine x, and u is sine x. So the derivative of sine x squared is 2 sine x cosine x. This can be factorized. Now, to find the minimum, we need to let f dash of x be equal to 0. So either this part or this part is equal to 0. So when cosine x is equal to 0, x is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on. If 3 minus 2 sine x is 0, sine x is equal to 3 over 2. But remember, sine x is between minus 1 and 1. So there's no value of x that satisfies this condition. So let's see what happens when we substitute these values into f of x. Sine pi over 2 is 1. Sine 3 pi over 2 is minus 1. So we can see that the maximum value is 12 whereas the minimum value is 6. So 6 is the answer. Section 1, number 2. In this question, we are told that this equation holds for every value of k, which means that we can substitute any value into k whatsoever. So first, to find the value of x, let's come up with the value of k that eliminates y from this equation. When k is 2, k minus 2 is 0, which eliminates y. So 4 plus 1x plus 6 minus 1 is 0. So 5x is minus 5. So x is minus 1. To find the value of y, we need to eliminate x, so let k be equal to minus 1 half. So x is minus 1, and y is 1. Section 1, number 3. In this question, we are told that these three straight lines meet at one point, and we need to find the value of a in the third equation. So because these lines meet at one point, we can solve the first two equations simultaneously to find the coordinates of the intersection. So now we know the coordinates of the point of intersection, which are minus 1 and 1. So let's substitute these values into the third equation to find the value of a. So a is 2. Section 1, number 4. We need to modify the left-hand side of this equation so that it conforms to the form that appears in the right-hand side of this equation. So first of all, in order to rationalize the denominator, let's multiply both the denominator 
and the numerator by root 3 plus root 2. The denominator becomes 3 minus 2, which is 1, and root 3 plus root 2 to the fourth power is the same as root 3 plus root 2 squared times root 3 plus root 2 squared. So A is 49 and B is 20. Section 1, number 5. First, 3 raised to the power of x equals 5 implies x is equal to log base 3 of 5. Likewise, 2 raised to the power of y equals 5 implies y is equal to log base 2 of 5. Now let's apply the change of base rule to these two expressions and let's choose 5 as the new base. Log base 5 of 5 is 1. So 1 over x plus 1 over y is log base 5 of 3 plus log base 5 of 2. And this is equal to log base 5 of 3 times 2 which is 6. So the answer is 6. Section 2, number 1. We are given the antiderivative of f of x. So let's find the derivative of this function f of x. Therefore, f of t is 3 t squared minus 4t plus 1. Notice that this part corresponds to this one, whereas this part corresponds to the rest minus a. So a cubed minus 2a squared plus a must be equal to a. Therefore, a is 0 or 2, but the question says that a is not equal to 0, therefore a must be 2. Section 2, number 2. So now we know that the antiderivative of f of x is x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. And this is greater than 0. So let's try and factorize this cubic function. To do so, let's first of all divide the left hand side into two parts. In the first part, x squared is the common factor. Now, since these two parts have x minus 2 in common, we can factorize even further. So the graph of this function looks like this, where the root of this function is x equals 2. So this function must be greater than 0 when x is greater than 2. Section 2, number 3. So in this question, we need to find the area bounded by the x-axis and the graph of f of x. We need to be able to visualize this graph. So let's first of all try and find the root of this function using the quadratic formula. So x is 1 or 1 over 3. So the graph should look like this. So the area that we need to find is this, shaded in red. However, we need to be careful because this area lies below the x-axis. So we need to use the absolute value sign. So the answer is 4 over 27.
Section 3, Number 1 Let's try and visualize this equation. In order for this equation to have four distinct roots, the straight line, mx, has to go through the origin here, and then have an angle such that the line cuts through the graph of this quadratic equation four times, like so. So this would be alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. When the straight line, mx, becomes the tangent to this part, the equation ceases to have four distinct roots, and instead it gets three distinct roots. So basically in this question, we need to obtain the value of m where mx becomes the tangent to this parabola. So let the point of tangency be called p with the coordinates x sub 1 and y sub 1. To find the tangent, we want to differentiate the equation of this parabola. But be careful because this part of the parabola is upside down. So we basically have to change the sign of each term. So at p, the slope m is minus 2x sub 1 plus 3. Also, at p, y sub 1 is minus x sub 1 squared plus 3x sub 1 minus 2. Therefore, the slope m can be expressed as y sub 1 minus 0 over x sub 1 minus 0, which is minus x sub 1 squared plus 3x sub 1 minus 2 over x sub 1. These two expressions should be equal to each other because they both express the slope m. Multiply both sides by x sub 1. So x sub 1 is plus minus root 2. But looking at the graph, the slope must be positive. So x sub 1 must be positive root 2. And let's substitute this value of x sub 1 into this equation of m. So the slope m must be greater than 0 but less than 3 minus 2 root 2. Section 3, number 2. We need to express the function s of m in terms of m. We can divide the four roots into two groups. Alpha and delta are the roots of the positive version, whereas beta and gamma are the roots of the negative version. And let's transform these equations a little bit so that the right hand side of each equation becomes zero. Now recall that the sum of two roots, alpha plus delta, is minus b over a, where a is the coefficient of x squared and b is the coefficient of x. So alpha plus delta is minus minus m plus 3 over 1, which is m plus 3. And the product alpha times delta is c over a, where c is the constant term. Likewise, the sum beta plus gamma is minus b over a, which is minus m minus 3 over 1, which is 3 minus m. And the product beta times gamma is c over a, which is 2. Now, let's combine these two terms as one group and these two terms as another group. The first two fractions can be combined into one. Likewise, the third and the fourth terms can be combined into one. Now, alpha plus delta squared is alpha squared plus 2 alpha delta plus delta squared, meaning alpha squared plus delta squared is 
alpha plus delta squared minus 2 alpha delta. And alpha squared times delta squared is alpha delta squared. Alpha plus delta is m plus 3. And alpha times delta is 2. So S of M is 1 over 2 M squared plus 5 over 2. Section 3, number 3. In this final question, we need to find the range of S of M when M is between 0 and 3 minus 2 root 2. So let's visualize S of m. S of m is basically a quadratic function whose vertex is at 0, 5 over 2. So m equals 0 corresponds to the vertex and we basically have to substitute m equals 3 minus 2 root 2 to find the upper bound of the range. So S of M is between the vertex 5 over 2 and 11 minus 6 root 2. And this is the end of this exam paper. See you next time.